Hey, Liam Ward here at LearnHarmonica.com. Today we're looking at adding dynamic shifts to our blues improvisation. So far in this course we've looked at note selection and at textures and at the blues scale. And all of those things are really great ways of keeping your solos interesting. But one thing that's often overlooked is the dynamic range that we can use. This is something that regardless of your level on the instrument can be a really useful tool for making your solos stand out from the crowd. So what I mean by dynamics is a range of volume and range of intensity in our soloing. So at the most kind of low, mellow level, we'd be playing quite quiet and we wouldn't be playing lots of notes, we wouldn't be kind of really digging in. And then right up to the top of our dynamic range, we'd be playing pretty loud, pretty ferocious, lots of notes, really kind of smashing, smashing the listener in the face. And then there's everything in between those ranges. And this is something that players so often leave out. Even experienced players I hear just playing at one volume, one level of intensity throughout all they're playing. And it's such a shame because it's such an easy way of adding more variety into your playing. So let me give you an example. A lot of people would, for example, play licks like this. Which is fine. I'm on a C harp, by the way. But what about if you varied the kind of intensity and the volume of what you're playing? I mean, I'm just kind of thinking of this on the spot, improvising those notes. But the second time I was kind of doing a bit of cupping to bring the volume down. I was actually playing quieter at different points. It was still quite intense, so I could even vary that further. I could kind of... You know, where the first bit isn't quite uh, as intense as the second part. There were lots of different ways of doing this. And I want to mention three different uh, kind of options just to give you uh, an idea of what to do. So you might start off by playing quiet and then as the solo builds you kind of get louder and more intense. So the solo might start just with a kind of really basic uh, you know warble on three and four. Something like that. It's pretty quiet and pretty mellow in terms of its intensity. But by the end you could be playing you know fast kind of triplet lines, loud and also intense in terms of the notes that you're playing. And so that would be kind of a, a building, if you like, like a mountain climbing sort of a solo. Another way to do things would be to do what I call a kind of wave, wave lines, where you kind of, you have different levels of intensity throughout. So you kind of start pretty mellow, quiet, build it up, down again, build it up again, down again, build it up, down, that kind of thing. A third way would be to do, I quite like this way, basically a kind of a, a bell curve where you're starting quiet, bringing it up and then bringing it back down by the end. You could also do a reverse bell curve where you start intense, quiet and then go back. There are loads of different ways, there are as many uh, variations as your imagination will allow. But I'll give you an example of uh, one of these. I'm going to just do the kind of the mountain climbing one. So I'm going to start pretty mellow, pretty quiet. By the end of the solo, I'm going to be pretty intense. In this solo, I'm probably going to use, I might use the blues scale, I might use the chord tones I've talked about, I'll probably use some textures as well. So building on the concepts that we've looked at in the previous lessons. If you want to know more about them, check out the links in the description. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Thank you.
Okay, so that's a little example of how you can add this dynamic shift into your playing. Now, if you need some help with expanding your dynamic range, and believe me, most harp players do, you can practice a really basic exercise where you take a note and you try and play it as quietly as humanly possible, and then you build it up to as loud as, as humanly possible. The most important bit is the quiet bit because we have a tendency to play really, really loud. Now, the default way people tend to play is this kind of volume, which is really quite high, you know, maybe 70, 80% of the volume the note could play before it starts to really, really, you know, distort or bend. So there's like 70, 80% of range that people never touch. So you can bring that down Now I could still hear that at the end. The microphone I'm using may not have even picked that up because it was so quiet. Now, it may be absurd to suggest you'd play it that quiet in the uh, you know, throes of a solo or with a band because it probably wouldn't even be picked up by the mic. But the point of the exercise is to expand your range. It's not because you're gonna use that very, very, very quiet. But hopefully that'll mean you'll use the 30 to 70% volume that you never usually use, where you can still be useful and still be heard. If you want to learn more about dynamic range and also loads more about blues improvisation, then try a free trial of my harmonica school. There are loads of courses on there, including a really in-depth blues improvisation course looking at all different concepts and approaches to soloing. There's also a forum where you can ask me questions, get feedback, talk to other harp players, and loads of jam tracks as well, which you can get access to. So check out the link in the description for that. If this video has been useful for you, I'd really appreciate it if you clicked like. What that does is tells YouTube to show it to other people. And also, if you want free lessons from me on YouTube every single week, then subscribe and click the little bell. I'll see you soon for another lesson. Until then, enjoy your practice. Cheers.